Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Gary here from RV Living Life. And today we're gonna to talk about something I'd never heard of before. And it is called the Battery Isolation Manager. And what this does is it connects your house batteries and your coach batteries together. So I guess it's more of something you would have in motorhomes as opposed to trailers. I don't think you'd have two sets of batteries in trailers, but you definitely do in motorhomes. You have your chassis batteries and your coach batteries and your chassis batteries are for running and starting your engine and your coach batteries are for everything inside your lights your fridge your stove whatever you have so those two systems with separate batteries work independently as well generators in the front it's a diesel pusher and uh, that generator will charge up your house batteries and they also get charged up when you plug into a pedestal when you're at a park or something similar anywhere you can plug your coach in and that'll charge up your house batteries. Now, they're not directly connected to your chassis batteries. Your chassis batteries are solely for your engine, and the two systems are not connected together. They are separate battery banks. In my case, I had four golf cart batteries in the front. They were sealed lead acid batteries, four um, six volt batteries, and then the rear batteries were two uh, 12 volt batteries, and they were larger batteries, but only two of them. There were two 12 volt batteries in the back for running the engine. And uh, the engine also, you know, it's part of the chassis system. So that also has your interior lights, your basement lights, anything 12 volt in your system is generally run off of that. So what the battery isolation manager is, is if you look at the front of your coach, you can see beside the driver's seat, you'll find a switch. And in ours, it's called the battery boost switch. And what the battery boost switch does is it connects those two sets of batteries. So let's say you're parked somewhere for an extended period of time and you had a lot of things going on on your 12 volts and you run your uh, chassis batteries down and you go to start your engine and it won't start. So you hold that switch down up at the driver's seat and what that switch will do is it will connect your two batteries, two sets of batteries together and it will charge up your chassis batteries from the coach batteries and then if you wait a little while, you'll build up enough power that you can start your engines and go. It also works the opposite direction, whereas if your house batteries are dead and you can't get anything going, you can hold that switch down and take power from your chassis batteries to keep everything in your house running. I did have that situation before where I had nothing running in the house and I just jammed something underneath the battery boost switch to keep everything going. So it's a very handy thing, but it does a little more than what I had anticipated. I thought it was just a switch for connecting them. But after looking into them, I started reading about this device called the BIM-225. And once I read it, I thought, well, for sure, that's what I have. Uh, what it does, it connects your two sets of batteries together. And when it detects that one, side of one set of batteries is below 13 and a half volts, and the other set is above 13 and a half volts, it connects them together. And they will stay continuously connected, I believe for at least an hour or indefinitely until both sets are over 13 and a half volts. So that's great. But when you switch your house batteries to lithium ion, now these batteries run at uh, a higher voltage. Uh, they also have a lot more amperage and more draw. So when you go to charge them from one set of batteries to another, it takes a long time to charge your house batteries from your coach batteries or from your chassis batteries. Because your house batteries are really, like in our case, we've switched to lithium ion. We have 800 amps of lithium ion batteries. LifePo4 actually. They're not lithium ion, they're lithium iron phosphate. They don't burn. So the fact that these two sets of batteries connect together to charge, that's a great thing. But the problem is, is when your house batteries are low, it takes a long time to charge them up with the alternator. So if you connect your two sets of batteries together with that switch, or if automatically connects them together, there'll be a long, hard draw on your alternator while you're driving. And it could damage your alternator, even burn it out. And uh, it's not really recommended to do that. I had no idea that this even existed in my system. And I ran for, I guess, about three years before I upgraded from the BIM-225 to the LIM-225, the lithium-ion version of it. Or just the lithium version of it, the lithium uh, LiPo 4. But anyway, for three years, I was uh, charging my lithium batteries from my uh, from my chassis batteries or which act ultimately comes from the alternator when it's running and it's hard on the alternator and I never thought it really did any damage but I did actually have to change my alternator one time it did uh, kick out on us and we had to get it replaced so 
after some investigation, I found out about the LIM-225, and I believe it runs on exactly the same function as the BIM-225. And what that does is it connects your batteries together when one side is lower than 13 and a half, it'll connect them together to charge them up. But because the lithium ion batteries would take so long to charge when they go down because it's such a large battery bank, what happens is it will charge them for 15 minutes or 20 minutes, and then it will stop charging them for 15 or 20 minutes to give the alternator time to cool and then connect them again and then disconnect them and connect and disconnect until the both sets of batteries are over 13 and a half volts. Um, this is a much better system and I decided, you know what, I'm going to look into this and I'm going to change what I have. So this is what I had in my coach. It is a battery isolation manager. Right, so it's exactly what I thought I had, except it's a, just a different model, different make, different brand. There's, there's all the wiring is marked right on it. And I'll show you the little part of the video where I did the actual changeover. But you can see how well labeled everything is. And um, when you go to change it over to the new one, it's also very well labeled. And you just swap all the wires over, except one of them is for the gen set here, which you don't use in the new version. I don't know why, don't care why, but it, it just says to, uh, tape that one off. Don't connect the gen wire, which I did and I did labeled it. So in the future Anybody went to change this they would see the gen wires there too if you needed it But uh, let's get to the installation. I'll show you how that worked Okay, so here is the current battery isolation manager with pretty easy wiring and here we've got the the new BIM Okay Get it a little closer there. And you can see we have coach and chassis batteries. But up here we have coach and chassis. They're on opposite sides, so I'm going to have to make the, the wires change over. And we've also got our signal switch, which is here, the data switch. We've got our ground, which is here. Okay. And we've got our ignition switch which is here. So this is all pretty obvious what to do. You know, in reality, I could just mount it this way and the two wires that are on the top would be on the correct sides. I don't see any issue with mounting it upside down, but it should be simple enough. Because right now those two battery wires up here are opposite sides. And let's just go up there and look. I don't know if there's a lot of extra cable up there. Once we get them unhooked, I guess we'll be able to tell. But they're on opposite sides, so putting the switch upside down does seem to make sense. Then they'll be on the correct sides. Anyway, I've got a labeler. It may seem silly, but I'm going to label all these wires so that they are correct. Let's get this back where it was. I'm going to get my labeler and label all these wires so I know what they are. Alrighty, signal, gen set, chassis, coach, ignition, and ground. Everything's marked. Okay, so now it's time to kill all the power from the posts, the batteries, anything that could be on, and uh, start changing this over. And I think I will mount it upside down because that way the coach and chassis batteries are on the same side as before. It'll be a nicer, cleaner setup.
Okay, so now when um, it's installed and I'm driving along, I use uh, Victron equipment and we have a Servo GX and you can log into the Servo GX with an iPad or a phone or whatever and you can get the screen on your phone or your iPad and I do that and I have my iPad magnetically, magnetically mounted on my dash so I can see the situation as we're driving, how much power I have left, how much solar we have coming in and what have you. And now I have this new option where I can see the uh, the power coming in from the alternator. It's coming in through the DC line. So normally in the past, I would always just see the DC line was flat. Uh, it would be like I was using 100 or 200 watts of power, or whatever, for running all the different things we have plugged into the 12 volt sockets and whatever else is running on 12 volt in the coach. And we would see that there. But now that the uh, LIM is trying to charge the chassis batteries, you can see the voltage reverses and it's actually running in a negative value. And that negative value actually means that it's charging. And as I stated, it would do that for about 15, 20 minutes, cut out, let the alternator cool down, it comes back on. Works great, I really enjoy that. And that's it. Thanks for watching everyone. That's how we change from the battery isolation manager for sealed lead acid to a battery isolation manager for lithium. And uh, we actually did change both sets of batteries. So our sealed lead acid batteries that were the engine batteries are now glass mat and our batteries for the house are LifePo4, lithium iron phosphate. So all of our batteries are top notch and it's really nice to have this thing charging when you're driving, just to give you a little boost as you go along. We at one time did um, consider buying a DC to DC inverter from Victron and having that running, but I don't really think we need it. I think we seem to do fine. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. Bye now.